Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So today we've got one system from the user WB in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending this system in. And without further ado, let's get into this. So I already got it on the workshop, so it should already be ready to go. There it is. So the Oblasco Stars, hope I'm saying that right, it's got a custom thumbnail for it as well, so looks pretty interesting. We will see what he has got in store for us here. It's looking pretty cool. Right, let's see what we got. Okay, ooh. Ooh, this looks cool already. So there's our binary star system. That was in the thumbnail pretty much. Okay, warning. For some reason, US2 has problems calculating orbits of planets orbiting a P-type trinary system. Keep trails enabled for a better experience. Unpausing is not recommended as some planets may get a bit glitchy. Yeah, the orbits have always been a bit weird when you have multiple stars. They start going all funny. Yeah, trails is usually the best way to see the orbits properly. Right, so we've got a barrier centre in the middle. So the um, Obelasco stars are a binary system of two Rolf Rayet stars, which are a rare um, heterogeneous stars. Oh, Heterogeneous set of stars with unusual spectra showing prominent broad emission lines and ionized helium and highly ionized nitrogen or carbon. They were first detected in 2032 and later observed by the Nancy Grace Roman Telescope. Its planets were later detected via imaging and transmit photometry. Okay, cool. So a little system based in the future here. Planets. So two stars. So we've got one and two. So one is the larger of the two stars. Mass-wise, the two, the second star is actually more massive. The first star is bigger in radius. Interesting stuff there. So let's put the zone on. I guess it's a pretty big... But obviously two stars, so the zones are slightly different. But that's pretty cool. Luminosity-wise. So, yeah, the one has more luminosity than the other. So the more massive star has more luminosity. Cool. Right, first of the planets. That is a very, very shiny... Well, that's very glowy. Oh, I do like that. That's pretty cool. Cool, cool. Okay. Aratus, a torrid airless um, Chophonia orbiting at around 33.6 AU. Because of the unfortunate position of the parent star's brightness, its crust is completely molten. It is the core of a gas giant stripped from its atmosphere due to hydrodynamic escape caused by the strong thermally driven atmospheric escape of light atoms which also drive off heavier atoms. Pretty cool. So formerly a gas giant, now it's just left, left of a core, pretty much, of a gas giant. The rock inside. And there's the two binary stars in view there. Pretty cool. Okay, awesome. We also got a little moon here. Orbiting very, very close indeed. There it is. Okay, cool. Moving on. Next up, we have got this one here. Ooh. This almost reminds me of a space engine planet with like the sort of two tin atmosphere going on there. That's pretty cool. Right. Um, Apollyon. A hot super oceanic super terror orbiting around 110 AU. Because of its mass, this planet sits in the barrier between a super Earth and a sub Neptune. As planets with a mass around 7 Earths or higher tend to develop hydrogen helium atmospheres, in which they later become known as a gas dwarf. However, due to this planet's proximity to the binary stars and temperatures, its developing hydrogen atmosphere likely or its developing hydrogen atmosphere likely evaporated during formation. This world is covered in a very deep ocean in which exotic forms of life form on its bottom, ice, um, ice 6 and ice 7. So, Ornam, one of Ipolion's moons, is what's known as a carbon planet or moon, where the presence of carbon compounds is much higher than its composition compared to other elements. Cool. So we've got an all-ocean world here, but a very, very hot one. So that water, I would not want to go, you would not want to go for a swim in there. 500 degree water. There it is, even at the crest. Even the coldest areas, 391. So that's still Venus levels of temperatures there. And that is a blooming cool looking planet as well. I really, really like that. Cool, cool. Right, the moon. So this is the moon he's talking about, the carbon moon. So there it is there. It's a very beautiful rocky planet as well, actually. I really do like the way that looks. I think the atmosphere looks spot on with it. It looks great. I mean, just get a good view of that. I mean, just turn all the interface off there. I mean... It's a good looking world with the water lava mixed together. It does look very, very nice. Yeah, it's seriously cool, that is. Look at the starlight. That's pretty cool. You can see the starlight going through the planet there. Look at that. That's really strange. <laughs> cool. But yeah, the star glow. That makes this one look like a great looking world. I really do like that. Oh, bit of an atmosphere view as well. 
So extremely bright, two parent stars over there. Nice. It's a good looking world that is. I do like that. All right, next up we have got. So is it Cyrium? Uh, where are we? Labels. It's over here. Okay, so this guy here, gas giant, very bright as well. A warm sub Jupiter orbiting at around 200 AU. Its atmosphere is majority dominated by helium, which gives this planet a white grey coloration, likely due to the hydrogen evaporation. A very strange phenomena observed from afar is one where Ukumi, one of the moons, holds an equ equational band of water thanks to its short rotational period. Very cool. So is that... Um, which one is it? Which one is it? Uh, moon's on. Got a little binary going on there. What's that all about? A very strange phenomenon observed from afar is where Ukumi one is. So where's Ukumi? Where's that one? Ah, there it is. Okay, so the one on the description has a band of water on the equator. Check that out. Now that is pretty cool. So the fast rotation causes that. So look how many hours. Two hour orbit. 124 minutes to do a full rotation. Pretty cool. I mean, look at that. That does look awesome, actually. That's a good-looking world as well. Nice orange two-tone sort of atmosphere going on there as well. Very nice indeed. So I'm guessing these are modics. If we tried modifying it... Yeah, it breaks it. Yeah, so these have got modded atmospheres as well, which is pretty awesome. I do apologise for kind of breaking it there, but <laughs> there you go. But yeah, that's cool. I like that. Um, next up, we got this one here, so we'll work our way inwards. So we've got a regular rock here. This one over here, Stylam. That looks like it's got one of those glitch bands that ignore that. So there it is, there's a good view of it. And then lastly, the closest one. An ocean world, 244 degree ocean. Orbiting quite close to the parent as well. It's a cool view of the parent, actually. Let's go and have a little look around. So there's your stars over there. See, the modded atmosphere kind of gives the stars a different appearance as well, which is pretty cool. And the gas giant, yeah, look at that in the sky. Oh, yeah. Big beast. Let's just get a manual sort of camera view of this as well. But, oh, 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 oh. There you go. So if you take a little look into the atmosphere and the clouds, there's your gas giant there. Looking awesome. A little further around, get a better view of him. So there's your gas giant in the sky there. Woo hoo! Looks awesome. Okay, cool, cool. Right, zooming on, uh, zooming out, moving on. So next up, we are checking out Ash. So where is that? It's over here. There it is. A hot Venusian super terror orbiting 261 AU. The planet holds a thick atmosphere, primarily composed of carbon dioxide and a global sulfuric acid cloud. Just like Venus, however, a particular characteristic of this world is the presence of iron rings. Its origin is yet to be determined. So you got your Venus equivalent in here. Look at that. The surface looks really cool as well, actually. That's really well done, the surface on that. You know, it doesn't it doesn't look like Venus at all, but it still reminds you of Venus. Yeah, that old, hot orange surface, the cratered areas as well. Glowing hot. That's a good looking world. Again, going with that modded sort of atmosphere as well, looking very, very cool. So there's a good look of it with and with the cloud layers. Or atmosphere layer, I should say. Very, very thick. Cool. Good looking little well there, all by itself. Set the iron rings around it as well. Some outer outer rings that are broken away as well. Look at that. This one down here. It's like broken broken away from the planet completely. Zoom in on it. It's a very small little thing, is it? Let's zoom in. There it is, yeah. Very, very small little asteroid in orbit there. Nice. Okay, next up we have got Power one, a warm Jupiter orbiting at 317 AU. So we're taking another jump now. There it is. Oh, uh, where are we? Power one. So a warm Jupiter, 317 uh, AU. Not too much can be said about this planet other than its characteristics aren't too much of note. On the other hand, one of its moons is subject to research as it is a phosphorus moon in which it is covered in lakes and uh, clouds of phosphoric acid. Giving it a very white appearance seen from space. Hey. So 
There's one of the moons there. Have a cool view of the gas giant, and then the second moon over here. So I'm guessing that's the white world he's talking about on the description there. Oh yeah. Definitely. There's a third moon over here as well, Fittiness. Cool. There's those guys. So next up we've got Calypso and Paros. So, moving on. There it is over here. Guessing it's a binary. It is. Two gas giants in close proximity. Okay. Two warm super tubes absorbed in at 437 AU. They are objects of interest to scientists given their formation, conditions and star type. Alongside other factors which should have stopped the formation of this double planet system. Calypso, the bigger of the two planets, holds a single desert moon named Dolkin. It is the only moon to have remained um, so far. All the others were likely ejected or destroyed during the early formation period. So these guys are very close together. That's a good looking gas giant as well. I like that. Quite a realistic look to it as well. I think, you know, the band's looking very, very nice. You know, that's a good looking one. Do you like that one? And then Calypso as well. I mean, more pale version as well, but also looking very, very smashing. Uh, then there's the only moon. It looks pretty torn up, you know, the surface, but patches of water on it. In a very dangerous game, this moon is in the between of these two gas giants there. Orbit wise, I mean, it's orbiting close. I mean, it should be okay orbiting the closer as it is, so hopefully it will hang on. Cool, cool. Okay, next up we have got Isit. So where is that? So that's this one. A temperate Lacustine Terra orbiting at 573 AU. So it's still uh, yeah, pretty far away. Look at those red, um, those sort of orangey atmosphere and the yellow clouds. That's cool. It is covered in a global cloud composed of very exotic compounds and traces of methane. Like other objects in this system, it is classified as an object of interest thanks to its atmosphere and cloud composition. So, looking underneath, there's your clouds. So it's an extreme level of clouds. He's got some pretty modded looking clouds, I'm guessing, here. Yeah, it's a good looking planet there. I really like those clouds. So that's what it looks like underneath. So it's actually looking pretty cool underneath. 50 degrees. With a very wild atmosphere on top. So let's get a little look of the surface below this monster so obviously the sky is covered and if you turn the atmosphere off the clouds look at the clouds the atmosphere really hides the clouds out but those are still some pretty wacky looking clouds very very strange design indeed for the uh or very strange world indeed with those clouds with the ocean underneath and that's a pretty pretty cool design really like that so i'm guessing these are modded clouds aren't they i mean they must be so if i was to uh, you know change the color yeah, you can see it loses that sort of extra tint to it. Still looks good, don't get me wrong, but that modded tint really makes a difference. And there's the moon as well. Cool. So that's a good looking world there. I did like that one. Next up, we've got this one. Turvanax, a cool Neptune. Orbiting at 835 AU, so it's pretty far out now. Has a little moon in the uh, ring system there by the looks of it. Can't even click on it, it's so small. There it is. So it's in the, like a shepherd moon. Pretty close. So, uh, not uh, much is worthy of note aside from uh, Ibersa. A moon with a subglacial ocean may have extremophiles living near thermal vents. So, kind of like possibly like Europa then. So, it's also got another moon over here. That's a nice looking gas giant, that is. Uh, one over here as well. And then the moon of note is Ibersa over here with the, uh, could have the uh, vents under in it, you know, the thermal vents. So, oh yeah, definitely like Europa. Maybe a bit, of, maybe a bit of Triton mixed in there as well. But there it is. Yeah, it's a nice looking model. The rings look good as well. Yeah, check that out. I do like that. Okay, next up we got Fawn and Horta. So we are taking a big jump. Oh, a very big jump over here now. So, binary going on here between these two. Two cool planets, a super Earth and a coreless Terra, orbiting at around 1060 AU, and they're still receiving plenty of sunlight. <laughs> due to their unique properties, or well, both are objects of interest to scientists due to their unique properties, such as Horta's lack of metallic core. So, very, uh, maybe it's a fragment left of some old gas giant or something, you know, some collision 
that's formed it to appear like that. You know, it's uh, pretty mysterious behind that. It says Fawn as well. Probably the more notable look alike of better looking of the two there. Okay, and then moving on to the finale, the final object. All the way over here, outside of that outer asteroid belt ring, we've got this world here. Check it out. It's got oceans. Minus 113 degrees. A cold ammonia terror orbiting at 0 0.0367 light years. So if you want that in AU, you simply need to press. Uh, where are we? Ah, uh, we can't see because it's orbiting that. They're in a binary, I'm guessing. Yeah, we'll just have to use our own uh, estimate sense. So if we zoom out quickly, so there's our. Uh, So we're looking at so if that's about if that's about 1500 AU, well that must be so that's 1500 AU. So it's a little further out. Oh, so you can pretty much figure it out. Actually, so it's 1500 AU from the star right now, and then it's 700 another 700 AU from the planet. So it's about 2300 AU away from the star. 2300. It's a very distant world. Still receiving its sunlight though. So it's the furthest in the system on one of the coldest. Nursing is classified as an ammonia planet, where ammonia is the main compound present in the planet. Mostly on its hydrosphere, theoretically. Um, Nessian could host ammonia life, such as plants that use ammonia as a solvent instead of water, and they would be a silicate base as they are a more adept to survive um, under, extreme, or under extreme cold weather compared to carbon-based life. Very nice. It's a good looking world. So you've got those methane oceans, kind of like Titan. But, uh, just there's only Titans, not that around that sort of temperature, isn't it? Maybe a little colder, actually. And also one moon here as well. So that is the end of the description. So looking good. So we're zooming out. There's also a few more particles. I think they're just rings, aren't they? Oh, it's just another asteroid, but further out. Okay, nice. Well, overall, that was a very nice system. I really enjoyed that. That's really, really cool. So there's our two stars. So one and two. But if you put it mass-wise, number two is bigger. Check that out. Pretty awesome. So onto the uh, size comparison down here. Let's just delete the rings. Gas giant-wise, I think that one definitely takes the cake for me. I think that one looks really good. Did like the white one as well. I thought that was quite cool. And the blue one. They're nice. Rocky world. I mean, this was a tough one. That hot ocean world was cool. The Venus light was really cool. And then that one with the... The glowing yellow, and then the one with the yellow clouds as well, which was this one, but we kind of ruined that when we modified it. But yeah, that one as well. I think they were all the best looking worlds in here. But yeah, overall, a very, very nice lineup. Really, really cool stuff in there. So there we are. That does it for this system. So again, a massive thank you to the user WB who sent this in. Very nice job, sir. Good job. Really enjoyed that. And yeah, if that will send done, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to press that like button, subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers now. As um, we've all got the 30k stuff out of the way now, although I'm actually filming this before this, uh, I'm filming this before the stream and the 30k special come out. When this video comes out, that will have been done. So yeah, let's help us on the road to 40,000 now. <laughs> but yeah, we're making good progress actually. Already to getting close to 31 already. I've been watching, so very very cool. Really appreciate all your support, guys. Absolutely amazing stuff. And yeah, stay tuned for more. And with that, we'll send done. Make sure you have a great day out there. Stay safe, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.